there, man. Hey, hello everybody, my name is Coblo and I'm bringing you guys View Replay Cast number 54, as you guys can see right there on the title page, because that is what I'm bringing you. And without further ado, let's go ahead and switch over the temporary overlay where the duct tape is still there. I still haven't figured out something that looks much cooler, but the temporary duct tape is still there, and it'll be fine. Um, it works out perfectly for the purposes of hiding who's my friend and who's not my friend, because as you guys know, with these View Replay Casts, I don't want you guys to have any spoilers, if I can at all help it, and I will do everything and anything to prevent that from happening. Even though it is timed and I will know how long it lasts, you guys won't, and that's all that matters. So, um, also, a big shout out to, his, um, sorry, big shout out to Husky, he changed his name. Big shout out to Husky for, um, for suggesting that I should cover that up, because I did not realize that at all, and all, pretty much everybody who sent the replay cast are usually my friend, not everybody, but a lot of people are, and, uh, that's, that's spoilers, which is no fun. And we all know it's no fun, unless it was a game that they lost. Which I highly recommend you guys send me in the games that were awesome, but, but you lost. Um, I know I've had so many awesome games that I've lost. I have so many bad games that I lost. And um, you guys have seen a lot of those. More so the bad ones as of recent. I'm not too sure what happened, but pretty much after v or POV number 30 or something like that, I just started losing every single game. So, D the Dota guys hate me. For all those 30 victories that you guys saw, you saw like a thousand more losses. Which is more, more or less how it usually is. And I will go ahead and admit that sometimes, sometimes I am recording POVs, but I don't post them because I rage. Like, like I do rage occasionally, and I usually rage after I lose like 20 times. So, the statement that somebody made before that said, "Um, video games don't make serial killers, just losing does," that's totally true. Because I know whenever I win a game, if I'm really good at it, I'm, I'm not gonna be like raging and try to kill people. But, but if I'm losing all the time, then I'm gonna be so angry. I'm just like throwing my computer out the window. Just, just a little bit of honesty going on here. Cool blues. Cool blues, not the full white knight. I do, I do have some of my black spots, but I'm still a white knight. I like to say, relatively speaking, of course. Let me go ahead and switch all these things to perfect, and everything is good. Everything is all great. I'm still trying to wait for a full team to get fully picked up, so that way we can go ahead and do introductions. But so far, so far, I see a tinker, and I also see a spirit breaker. So I, th I think tinker's gonna be dying a lot to spirit breaker. I also see a um. See a Pudge versus a Tuscar, which you don't usually see often, but I will, I do foresee Tuscar having a few derpy deaths to Pudge. Not that I've watched this before, guys, I promise I haven't watched this before, it's my first time watching this one, but I'm just predicting what we're gonna see. Because uh, you can snowball into Pudge's rot and hook, and he can just eat you alive. So, anyway, ooh, crap, I like that. I want one, I want one, I want one, anyway. And it walks sideways, that's pretty cool. Anywho, um, doing, starting off with the introduction, starting off with the side of the radiant side, since they were the ones that are fully picked up first. Let me go ahead start off with this Pudge, who is going to be the one to watch, I guess. Uh, we see May on him. Moving over to this Rubik, we see Masudu, Mayasutu on that Rubik. On this Fano Assassin, we see Lo Loki Venectum on that PA. Moving over to this Tinker, who I guess will also be another one to watch. Uh, we see, begins. hey, does he have outfit? No, he doesn't, okay. Just bad, quali bad texture quality on my part. We see W. We see what do you want? What do you want? I'm assuming on the tinker. And moving on down bottom, the last person, of course, we see def def Defeat Multi Filter on that anti-mage. Moving on to the side of the dire, we see on this Mega Creep. No, I'm joking. Uh, we see on this Tusk We see Argo on him. Moving over to this <laughs> to this Clinks. <coughs> Heck yeah, Demacia! On that clinks. Shout out to League of Legends. I still like the game, even though I like Dota a lot better. I guess. I guess, I guess it's a little contradictory statement. Anyway, down bottom, actually, we got a little bit of gauge to have on top of our Ar 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 Ergo getting harassed a little bit by this Rubik. Something you can do as a support because early on, Tuscar can't really do anything but snowball towards you, which would pretty much be his death. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> continue on. I think I was talking about this disruptor. Um, we see Rise to Honor on that disruptor. Moving over to the top, on Ogre Magi, we see Ice Freeze. On him, and then last but not least, of course, on the spirit break, we see 50 Centaur. <laughs> That's pretty creative. On him, and that pretty much ends all the call so far. So, as far as the lane matchups go, uh, we see a laning Pudge, uh, and we also see a PA in the top lane for the Radiant versus a, uh, a spirit break and Ogre Magi on the top lane for the Dire. Uh, moving on down to the middle, we see a Clinks versus a Tinker, which I actually do like this lineup. Sort of Clinks, Clinks, Clinks shouldn't die to Tinker. But then again, Clinks is probably going to die to Tinker soon, because Tinker can uh, nuke him down pretty well. And that March Machine does hurt, it does affect you while you're invisible. Uh, moving on down bottom, on this, uh, on this dual lane versus dual lane action once again, we see a Rubik and an Anti-Mage versus a Tuscar and a Disruptor. Disruptor rotating down bottom was definitely, definitely necessary. There was no need for a tri lane up top, so I definitely, def definitely do agree with this. 
Um, the Charlie on the top wouldn't really work all that well because Pudge would get higher levels and then all the supports would be just getting eaten alive with those hooks. And actually, we might be seeing a hook here soon. Uh, we got Spirit Breaker walking in the prime position. Uh, Spirit Breaker is trying to juke behind his uh, creep. He doesn't want to get caught out. So we shall see. Um, um, Pudge, is, Pudge is waiting for that hook. He's waiting for the perfect moment. He actually had a um, perfect moment right there, but I don't think he'd be able to kill him because Spirit Breaker would just charge out. He is level 2. So he does, actually no, he hasn't put a point inside anything. So this is actually a pretty creative play coming off of Spirit Breaker. He's not too sure what to go for. Um, but I would argue that the only things you should go for on Spirit Breaker are Charge and uh, Graded Bash. As opposed to getting any points inside of your Empowering Haste. Which is not useful. And there we go. He gets a point inside of his Charge, gets a point inside of his Bash. I can understand though. Initially you're not too sure which one to go for. Because if you do get hooked, you want to charge away. And if you don't get hooked and you make it to like level 2 or 3, then you want to go ahead and put a point inside your Bash. But typically, typically, Spirit Breakers go for the Bash first, because uh, charge, charge is not really useful unless you have Bash now. So, And he'll actually have two points in Bash soon. We got a rotation coming down bottom from that Clinks. Demacia on that Clinks. He's just running down there. Catch himself a loser rune. Um, he is not doing too well. Actually, no, no, never mind. They're, they're pretty much on equal footing. Oh, man, we got PA taking a lot of damage up top. What should be going down? Ogre Maja and Spirit Breaker did, uh, Spirit Breaker did charge. Ogre Maja did throw a stun and also threw a fire. He wants to go for the kill. They're going to go for the kill on top of Pudge instead. Pudge needs a few more auto attacks. He goes and denies himself. Beautiful deny coming out from May. But it looks like PA, she might be going down. Uh, she's getting burned to death. Will it be enough damage? No, gosh, no. That burn damage does, like, nothing to anybody. And uh, PA, she, she, um, she should be fine. She should be fine. But Pudge, beautiful deny coming out from him. Denying that early first blood. And I think... I think if you don't get the first kill, you don't get the first blood gold, but you do still get the first blood call on the next kill. I'm not too sure. We'll see. We'll see very soon. We'll see very soon. So moving on down bottom, uh, we ha we had the war of, atten uh, war of attrition going on, and actually up top, these guys are still taking damage. Spirit Breaker charges on top. PAP in a little bit of trouble. There's a stun coming up for Ogre Magi. Beautiful engagement. A beautiful, <laughs> beautiful combination. And yes, you do still get the first blood gold once you get the first blood. Deny does not negate the first blood gold. So. That was a beautiful combination coming up from these guys. I had never considered it, but I mean, then again, who picks Ogre Magi nowadays? That is very true. So Spirit Breaker, Spirit Breaker charges one, and then uh, as soon as the person sees him, tries to run away, uh, Ogre Magi stuns him and throws out the fire. And then by that time, Spirit, uh, Spirit Breaker should be hitting him as well, and then getting the stun on top of him. Anyway, um, PA trying to get a little aggressive. That's a lot of damage coming her way. I don't know what she was thinking. I think she's drunk. She needs to go ahead and go home. Ogre Magi trying to come for the kill. We got Spirit Breaker charging. That's an easy kill. Easy kill is easy. Pudge got a hook on top of the, um, on top of Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi trying to run away. No, he gets a hook now. And actually, he needs one more hit, but no. <laughs> Beautiful play. Actually, not necessarily a beautiful play by Ogre Magi, but lucky as crap, Pudge toggled off his right because he thought he wasn't going to get the hook. And then Ogre Magi just casually walks away. Ogre Magi getting away with murder. Actually, Spirit Breaker getting away with murder, but close enough. So, up top, so far, the Spirit Breaker Ogre Magi lane is working out pretty darn well. Um, I think it's more so a result of Pudge and uh, Phantom Assassin being a little bit too aggressive. After Spirit Breaker can charge, no, he's out of mana. He's going to be taking a lot of right damage. Pump himself a healing salve because healing salve does not stop. Or sorry, right does not stop you healing self until level three. Of course, as we all know, I honestly I didn't I didn't realize that applied to uh, other people as well, but applied to I thought I thought it only applied to Pudge. Uh, Pudge throws out a midget hook. Midget hook does not latch. It would have reached if you would throw out a full um, full range, I think. Or maybe Spirit Breaker just moved too fast. He does have one point seven empowering haste, so that could be what caused the difference. Dyer's top tower is under and uh, um, honestly, honestly, I would argue that uh, empowering haste is probably one of the most useless skills on Spirit Breaker. Uh, relative to his other skills, actually Pudge commits suicide. Huh. But um, I, I would argue that it's one of the most useless skills on Spirit Breaker relative to um, his other abilities. But then again, uh, when you're playing against somebody who has a lot of um, skill shots, where you have to aim your stuff, and you have to land it, and there's no like automatic point target type stuff going on, um, having more movement speed is actually really nice. We got Ogre Magic coming around the back corner. I didn't really see his rotation. Ruby's going to be going out. He's taking a lot of damage. There he goes. Boom goes the dynamite. Tusk able to pick up the kill. And Intimates is like, hey, what happened to my support? Meanwhile, as far as Intimates build, Intimates will be going for that battle for as fast as possible. He is saving up that gold for that um, but for that ring of health. Um, he does have his Tranquil Boots, so that's a sign that he wants to stay in lane for as long as possible. Meanwhile, we got Charge coming mid on top of Tinker. Tinker's in a lot of trouble. He's trying to get his boots to travel. Will he be able to get us out soon enough? No. Pudge gets a hook. Beautiful hook from Pudge. Same as Ally's life. His ally is going to be on make out life. If Pudge had another hook, he could go for the kill on top of somebody. But actually, um, Clinks might still be going out. Clinks, why you know popping Viz? He's out of mana. I'm not too sure what Clinks was saving up for, but I'm pretty. Yeah, he had he had 1,200 gold in his bank account before he died. Actually, 1,300. Prior to his death, I'm not too sure what he was going for, but whatever it was, it just got delayed by a little bit. And there we go. He's buying a wraith band. And he's buying some boots. Probably needs to go ahead and go for those power treads. <coughs> I would suggest as a Clinks because Clinks doesn't have a lot of HP. 
Actually, no, we got Speed Breaker charging mid. Uh, no suggestions going on here. We got Ogre Maja and Speed Breaker just showing you guys how the combination is done. May gonna be going out. Gets a suicide. Holy crap. <laughs> If anything, if anything, Pudge is really good at suiciding. <laughs> and we got GG getting thrown by Antimage a little bit early. Antimage doesn't feel like playing anymore. I, I, I really do just like this. Hopefully he does keep playing though, because otherwise it's going to be a raffle stump from here on out. <laughs> so it's user. that's the name of Antimage, user multi filler. And yes, yes, um, really fast, let's go and take a look at the items, because I want to see how everybody's progressing so far. We got Spirit Breaker going for a extremely fast Mask of Madness. Um, not necessarily extremely fast, but a fast Mask of Madness. He's almost there. Um, he's been getting the gank, so he doesn't really care. Um, they actually might be going for a kill up top, on top of this um, wild PA, who's just hanging out top. She, she has no cares in the world. She has, she, has, um, she better start getting some cares. We got Spirit Breaker charged on already. Ogre Magic throws out the Soul Ring, throws out a stone top PA. PA gonna be going down. There's no way for her to run. Her creeps are a little bit too far away. Pudge with the hook. It does miss. It might have saved a life, or it might have killed uh, Pudge as well. But Spirit Breaker is level 6, so he did have his ulti up. And he just needs a few more last hits, and then he'll have his uh, Mask of Madness. And then he'll be Bash, Bash, Bash City. And this is actually a really perfect timing for Mask of Madness, because uh, not anybody can do too terribly much damage with their nukes. As far as uh, as far as auto attacks go, or just as far as the nukes go. I don't think Tinker can actually go for the kill or anything, because he only has one point inside the laser. Rockets will hurt Spirit Breaker, though. Rockets will hurt Spirit Breaker. Next is Spirit Breaker not charging, but Tinker feels the pain. The burn is too much, and we got a haste rune on top of Ogre Magic as well. I didn't realize that. Ogre Magic throws out a stun. He needs a few more attacks. Actually, he got blinded. He needs to go ahead and start running away. He's going to start running away the wrong way. I'm not too sure. Misclick going on. He's going to be going down. Pops himself a smoker to see. Dodges the bullet, but doesn't dodge the other one. And he goes down. It almost worked, guys. It almost worked. There you go. If, if you time it right, you can dodge a bullet just by popping yourself a smoker to see. Because if the tower can't see you, then you go down. But I think as soon as he popped it, it made him invisible. But he was too close to the tower or too close to Tinker. Because the range on Smoker Deceit is like a 1,325. One or sorry, what, 1025. Whatever. That's close. I said the 25, right? It's like, it's that, it's that close. So if, if you're within range of a tower by that much, or if you're within Radiant another hero by that much, then uh, you'll be detected and your invisibility is worn off. But if, if he wasn't detected, he might have made out a lot. Meanwhile, we got Disruptor. We got Disruptor trying to run away from Multifiller. Multifiller trying to go for the kill. He's going to pop his mana break. There we go. Pops it. Gets a kill. Tuscar trying to do what he can to stop him from doing it. And there's a tactical pause coming out from that Ogre Magi. Not sure what's going on on top. It looks like he's having a few issues. PA might be going out on top. And we got a second getting thrown by Ogre Magi. No, it doesn't look like they're going to be going for it. They're, gonna, they're not going to give it to him. Punch with a beautiful hook. Save his all his life. But I think Spirit Breaker should be able to still kill her. No, he's not going to be able to kill her. Ogre Magi couldn't follow up with the stun. <laughs> We got Tuska throwing out the wall uh, around Antimage. Antimage says, I'm fine with this. Kills the creep. Then walks right on out of it. Meanwhile, moving on to the grass. Uh, as far as the gold graph goes, of course, of course, it's a favor of the Radiant. R Radiant. Radiant. Actually, it's a favor of the Radiant. Whoa, well, hold on. I didn't realize that. I thought it was going to be a favor of the Dire. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, it's in favor of the Radiant, apparently. Um, that could be more akin to the fact that Spirit Breaker has been doing more hero kills than farming. And Tinker, yeah, Tinker, Antimage, and PA, they've been farming as much as they possibly could. Specifically, Tinker and Antimage, because Clinks can do jack squat against this Tinker mid. All he can really do is try to rotate out top and try to get a kill, but they don't really need him on top to get a kill. So I think it'll be um, a little bit better if he rotated down bottom and try to go for a kill on top of Ruby. Get a few kills on the supports. But instead, he go he's going to go ahead and eat a creep. Actually, no, he didn't eat a creep yet. He's not necessarily eating the creep, he's just killing it and, you know, put it, <clears throat> patching a part of its life force with his life force. I guess it could be considered eating. There we go. Makes a death pack, that's what he does. So we got Clink's walking around the corner, he's ready for damage, he's ready for killing people. He has increased health and also increased damage by, I think, 5% of the HP that of the creep that he killed. It was actually a lot of free HP. He has a point inside of Strife. Actually, no, he doesn't have a point. Yeah, he, he finally has Strife, so he will need to go ahead and pop it. Will he give it away before the time is up? Actually, we got PA um, leaping right towards Clinks, and we got TP support coming in instantly coming out from points, but it doesn't matter. PA is dead, and there's a stun coming out, or sorry, ulti coming out from Spirit Breaker to follow as well. They didn't really need, like I said, they don't really need um, Clinks in to go for the kill, and they actually don't need Clinks anywhere to get the kill. Um, we got Tusk about to be going now. Rocket will be, will be able to finish off. Anti Mage. Getting the kill, I'm sorry, Tinker getting the kill on top of that, Tinker did rotate down on actually Tinker walks inside the static cloud, oh my gosh, he got caught just on the edge of it, holy crap, <laughs> holy fell plays Batman, the, <laughs> the static wall came up and Tinker walked right inside of it, and then the static storm, <laughs> I would say beautiful play by Disruptor, but that was more so, that was more so Tinker's, Tinker's derp on that part, I will go ahead and admit that, 
Uh, PA is going for a battle fury of her own. Ainsbury is going for a battle fury of his own. He's actually a lot closer than the PA because he hasn't died so much. But um, with ha having having your two carries or having your two of your three cores, I think I, I guess you can consider Pudge a core. But Tinker's more so a core than anybody else. <laughs> having two of your three cores, um, building something that's so late game oriented, like a uh, battle fury. Battle fury says I want to farm more so I can get the bigger items. With the exception of PA, PA she kind of needs a battle fury for extra damage because crits do hurt a lot. And if you get a 35% cleave on a 500% crit, that's oh, like 450% crit. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. But Antimage on the hand, on the other hand, um, Battlefield is just more so for him farming as fast as possible because he can farm all dumb camps as fast as possible or really fast. We got Smokehead coming up top. We got Tuscar and Ogre Magi looking for the, um, looking to go for a kill on top of his punch and PA. We got Tuscar popping his ulti and his ulti will not be able to do anything. He might go punch a creep. Nope, no punching creeps. And actually we got TP. Oh, we got TP's coming out for Ogre Magi. We got Clean's walking around the back corner and now Ogre Magi is probably gonna feel sad about TPing out because they could have got they could have gotten themselves a kill. The Pudge and PA playing blind, and actually both sides are playing pretty blind. We got Tinker, Tinker going down to the Ogre Magi. We got Spirit Break getting caught out a little bit. Uh, I think Rubik took his ulti, yeah, he, Rubik took charge. But it doesn't matter, Rubik will be going down. No matter how much charge he takes, he'll still be going down. Meanwhile, Ainsmage is still trying to farm up his battle food. He'll have that up very soon. Ogre Magi, Arcane Boots, that's going to be huge for him and also his allies. That's free mana. He's going to be essentially a walking fountain. He has the region needed, necessary to survive with that Soul Ring, because Soul Ring does give you some extremely good region. And he also has a soul ring, or sorry, he also has a mana regeneration whenever he needs it. Both the burst mana and also mana regeneration. Pudge throws out a hook, it does miss everything on top, and I think that'll be the end of his uh, his run. Actually, Disrupt is looking for him. Disrupt does have a point inside glimpse. If he can find a Pudge, that'd be an easy kill, but no, he glimpses a PA instead. I don't think it's the right targeted glimpse. But he throws out a static storm, and actually, no damage to follow up. There we go, we finally got his damage coming on the corner to follow up. Is Pudge level 6? Yes, he is level 6. He's gonna go for a kill on top of Clinks. So Clinks will be going down. PA, PA survives. Just barely, but PA does survive, and actually, Disrupt is now officially on the run. He's actually going to try to TP out. Will he be able to make it alive? Rubik stole something. Rubik stole Thunderclap and Disruptor. He's going to try to TP out, but he gets tell him he's hooked it and missed. And there's a dead, dead Disruptor. <clears throat> yes, Tinker does have boots to travel, though, so that's going to be huge for his team. That means he can stall. He can start stalling for his allies, so he can let his PA and his anti mage get room to farm. Because the more Tinker pops his ult, um, ulti, the more... I'm oh, sorry, the more Tinker TPs around and... Um, Uses and boots to trap. Or, nah, march of mat, march of machines, <laughs> march of madness. The more he does that, the more his, uh, the more room that intimates and PA will be able to have to go for the kills and top things. We got a uh, ice wall getting thrown by Tuscar, just barely, just barely out of range. It didn't catch anybody. The top tower will be going down. Tinker picking up the gold for that. TP canceled. And is Spear Breaker charged? Is a big question. No, he's not charging. Is that? We got TP coming up top by Ogre Magi, and we got uh, Tuscar on the run. He's trying to run as fast as possible he can. He has a whole bunch of healing cells, which is actually concerning. But we got a snowball coming out on top of PA. PA does get hit with that stun, and she also gets chain stun. We got Spear Breaker charging in as well. Will he be able to hit her? Is a big question. Yes, he does hit her. Boom goes the dynamite, and Spear Breaker gets himself a kill on top of that. You know, down bottom, Ancient Mage free farming, and this might be the downfall of the Dire. I'm letting Ancient Mage get free farm because Ancient Mage still can do a lot of damage regardless of how far his, behind his team is, but he really needs his big items up in order to carry his team at this point. Because uh, PA, PA doesn't look like she'll be finished her battle for anytime soon. Pudge, he has Arcane Boots, so he's going to be going for the more I'm going to throw a hook and try to, as, as opposed to I'm going to try to survive type Pudge. Oh no, hold on. I, th I think I think Pudge goes for Arcane Boots anyway. Never mind. Ignore me, guys. I, I know not of what I speak. Fallen Tower does go down. Disruptor tried to TP in to try to deny it. Wasn't fast enough. Uh, meanwhile, rotations in the jungle. No, no rotations just yet. So Ancient is going to continue farming for free. His battle free is almost up. Just about 100 more gold away from that. Uh, Ogre Magi looking to do something. I think he saw the Ancient walk around the corner. So he casually backs away. We got a Rubik. Rubik run away from that Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker got hit with his own ulti. And that's pretty much the end of all of that. Madness. Meanwhile, we got PA steadily chasing a, a wild Tuscar, and she actually needs to be very careful. If Pudge could get a hook on top of one of these guys, that could be a dead one of those guys. But PA just needs to get out of his way. And that that's one of the biggest things. Like, like people with skill shots like uh, Pudge, specifically Pudge and um, Clockwork. Um, if they're on your team, get out of the way. That's the biggest thing. If you're standing, for, if you're always in front of them, or if you if you always find yourself in front of them, I don't know about you guys, but I always find myself in front of them for some reason. Um, Get out of the way, otherwise they can't do the job. Because the more people in their way, the more chances of them hooking something wrong, getting the wrong hooker. We got Disruptor walking around the back corner with a illusion room. If these guys do waste a few abilities on top of them, that would be much, 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 much appreciated.
Just dropped a walking down here. Rubik does see him, and there's a charge coming out from Spear Breaker. Rubik is uh, probably knows this illusion. He needs to go ahead and start running. He's all by himself. He's all alone. He should he should know his death is inevitable right now. He's trying to run. Spear Breaker decides to cancel the charge. He's gonna go go for mid. We got a kill going to Orgrimmaja on top of that team. That's not a, uh, that's not the kill you want. PA the only one getting caught. She will be going down. And Rubik still stuff and Rubik steals the ulti once again. How many times is he gonna steal his ulti? Is a big question. He throws out telekinesis, he's getting silenced by Disruptor. He tries to get hook punch, almost got the hook on top of him, but it doesn't matter. Punch had a hook on top of Ogre Magic. He might be able to get himself a kill. He else, he will be able to get a kill on top of Ogre Magic. Gets punched out of the air. Intimates come around the corner, try to go for a kill on top of Disruptor, but that was the illusion. That was not the real thing. And now he runs away. Battle Fury's up on top of him though, so that could that could be the start of something. But he needs to go ahead and use his Battle Fury by farming and not waiting at the tower, staring at his tower as it as it casually falls. Because right now Intimate has no damage. He's in zero condition to deal with these guys right now. Not that he has no damage, but he doesn't have as much damage as everybody else does. Middle tower is under so, uh, Shadow Blade coming up on top of Spear Breaker, so he's going for the charge Shadow Blade. I'm going to kill you anyway, Spear Breaker. And the middle tower is still not going down. We got ATPs coming in from everybody. Pudge, Pudge gets sent back to base. And actually, that would have been a fountain hook. Holy crap. If Pudge would have landed that hook, that would have been a fountain hook. <laughs> that would have been a fountain hook. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh man. Part of me really wishes that he would have landed that. Just to see a fountain hook happen in a game where there's no chin and there's no uh, coddle. Or wisp. But that was that was that was close. Disruptor almost ended his own life right there, guys. Anywho, uh, we got the middle, we got our middle, these guys are trying to push, are pushing as fast, as hard as they possibly can. Rubik getting charged by Spear Breaker, he should be in a little, a little oh, sorry, he should be very careful. He should know he's in a lot of trouble because he's the one who's been constantly getting charged. Spear Breaker coming around the corner, PA is going to start running away as fast as he possibly can, but she's actually close enough to get hit with the bat. She does get hit with the bat, Spear Breaker can actually finish off both of them. He throws the ultimates on Rubik, very, very, very bad ch um, choice on his part. He should have thrown it on PA, that would have been a lot easier kill because Rubik was dead anyway. And we got Shadow Blade fully finished on top of that Spear Breaker. Moving on to Tuscar, he has Phase Boots and Earn the Shadows. Uh, Ogre Magi has, is starting to build himself, he's starting to build his team that Mechanism, or potentially a Pipe. Uh, in this specific case, I think Mechanism would be useful. Actually, no, Pipe would be more useful, especially pushing against the uh, March Machines. We got Pudge throwing his ulti on top of somebody around the corner. Demacia, all night Clinks does go down. Easy kill is easy, but what does Clinks have? Clinks is start trying to build himself a Orca Malevolence. It's going to take a while. You know, we got a. Tower going down mid for the dire side. They can actually continue pushing mid if they really want to, but no, they decide to smoke up and go down bottom. They want to kill his anti mage. Anti mage trying to build himself a Yasha. He's almost close to it. If he can get the Yasha up, I think it'll be a worthwhile death. But he needs to go ahead and blink down and pick up that illusion or invis room. He doesn't know it's there. Actually, he shouldn't know it's there. But we got these guys in the jungle. They're all waiting. Spearbreaker Spear 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 doesn't want to be the first one in there. H-Mage Yasha is fully finished, so it won't be that bad if he dies right now. We got a, a gauge hammer on the corner. Pudge will be going down. H-Mage. H-Mage just says, screw that. I'm going to run away. Attack. And we got Disruptor. Disru oh, crap. Sorry. Disruptor following the H-Mage. H-Mage does not blink away. There we go. He finally he blinks away at the end. Very good patience coming on his part. I'm trying to follow him, but it won't let me click on him. Jesus. Don't it, Dota. So it's an observer ward inside the jungle. That's going to be huge. That means Spearbreaker can, get, um, can gank all around the map from from wherever the freak he wants. And on top of that, he has a Shadow Blade completed. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Spearbreaker, Spearbreaker can activate his Shadow Blade. He, he can also activate his Mask of Madness and a BKB and a Necro Book and also some other item, but I forgot what it was. Oh, uh, while he's charging. So that means he can continuously charge and then go invisible before you know it and then hit you while he's invisible with his charge. And then punch you for a free crit. And then ulti with the free damage. And it's like a lot of stuff going on. So will we see it happen just now? Yes, we will see it happen. Spear Breaker pops up a Shadow Blade. Anthony's getting hit with that charge. Not knowing what hit him. And will he be going down? That's a PA, sorry. PA going down. That's a PA going down. And Spear Breaker with the Shadow Blade is actually it's, it's powerful to a point. Um, Spear Breaker has a certain point where he just stops becoming useful as a uh, primary carry. And just becomes more useful as a stun bot. Um... And I don't think in this game we'll see him reach that point because he's actually getting a lot of farm, so he's going to be able to get the farm necessary to become a primary carry for his team. Um, Shadow Blade will help him get to that point, but I think he needs to go and start building himself a, a Heaven's Halibur for uh, damage evasion and also for extra damage. And also a Chrysalis and Pudge. Oh my gosh, Pudge threw his ulti, but he canceled it for like one second, and Tuscar was like, <laughs> okay. But it doesn't matter, Disruptor was around the corner, so Disruptor will just stop him anyway. And Disruptor throws out the glimpse, gets a, um, gets a uh, wall on top of Pudge, Pudge gets pumped. Punch in the face and he goes down. No deny for you. That is only a rot level one. Actually, no, sorry, it's a rot level four. Never mind. And I hear Spearbreaker ulti. Spearbreaker ulti on top of Tinker. Tinker does go down. 
And there's a Bloodlust on top of Spearbreaker as well. He's out of mana, but he doesn't care. He got the kills. And he's actually running into the jungle. He might find himself a free kill on top of PA. But PA, PA doesn't know whether to go for the farm or not. And she's been sitting on pretty much the same item for the past, I don't know how long, but too long. I mean, at least Antimage is progressing items. Like I said, Antimage is more important um, as far as becoming the late game primary carry. Uh, PA, she can, she can become that hard carry too if she gets the items up, but she's a long ways away from getting her items. Such as more damage items. Radiance That's really it. I know. MKB. Would that be nice on PA? Right, PA is going to try to go for a kill on top of the disruptor. That's a big mistake. And we got Tuscar. Tuscar pulling the disruptor back in. The disruptor say, yeah, this is for the last time. This is what you get. Actually goes for a kill. He gets a kill on top of. Or sorry, Tuscar gets a kill on top of on top of that PA. And now we got Intimates in a lot of trouble. He's trying to run away as fast as possible. He doesn't know when to blink. There we go. He finally blinks around the corner. We got Spearbreaker charging. Rubik felt that stun. And Intimates will be able to blink soon enough. No, he will not be able to blink soon enough. Spearbreaker ulti to fly. No ulti. No ulti to fly. I don't think, yeah, he didn't, he didn't have mana for him, he wasn't on the cooldown. We got there, now we got everybody chasing around this uh, Ru or wild Rubik, and Rubik does go down. Spearbreaker picking up the kill on top of that. As a consolation prize, but having Antimage not die in that engagement, that is uh, actually pretty bad uh, for the Dire, because he's, like, the longer and longer, the more room you give him, the more farm he's going to get. You can see his life, despite how the game is going, his last hits are two, 102. He, he actually has not died this entire game, guys. HMH has not died this entire game. He's only been farming. And consistently farming. You know, we got PA trying to run away from his Ogre Magic. Ogre Magic gets a stun. Multicast. OP. Please nerf. And there's a uh, Spearbreaker charging. Uh, Pudge Hook almost got him. Actually, PA just ended the life of Tinker as well. There's Argo able to pick up a kill on top of that. Pudge trying to get his ulti on top of... Uh, trying to get a kill on top of somebody. Doesn't get the kill. Antimage comes out the corner. Throws out the mana break, but it's not enough damage. Actually, he might be going. This might be his first death of the game. He's taking a lot of damage. Chain stun to go. He gets some stuff. He goes down. Ogre Magic. TP's out. He's fine. And now we got GG getting thrown out once again by Antimage. And there's a Shadow Blade up on Tuscar as well. Radiant as far as the gold graph goes, I, I wasn't sure how it was in favor of the Radiant, but now that I see the Antimus was free farming that entire time and hasn't or have and didn't die the entire time, um, I can definitely see how because his net worth is probably up pretty darn high. There it is, right there, right up there with Speedbreaker. But the rest of his team is actually kind of um, is, is at the bottom. Kind of slacking. Radiance top tower. And the Dyer are in prime shape to actually do everything, despite the fact that Clint hasn't really been doing the best in the world. Um, actually, I think I think in the, at this point, Tinker might want to invest inside of a, uh, sh a Ghost Scepter. Because you can TP out while you're Ghost Scepter, which I think is freaking broken. But anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanic of Tinker, I guess. Whatever. Or it's, it's a mechanic within the game. Spearbreaker charges up. Anti mage. Anti mage might be. Oh, is it gonna be in a lot of trouble? Spearbreaker out of mana. Actually, he might be saved. Perma bash. One more bash. All he needs. He gets a bash. Anti mage goes down. Trying to blink away. That perma bash. OP. Please nerf. As far as Rubik, Rubik hasn't really progressed much. He has a magic one, which I think is the biggest thing that he has. Uh, Tuscar Shadow Blade, like I called up before. He's also built himself a Desolator. Wow, that'd be nice. Um, meanwhile, we have up there trying to build himself a four sta four staff, or maybe maybe he could potentially be building himself a uh, Dagon, which I think would be hilarious. But four staff would be a little bit more useful, so you can four staff glimpse. Four staff glimpse pretty powerful. Not as powerful as a four staff uh, burrow strike on eight, uh, Sand King, but four staff glimpse does help you get into those get, uh, get, get into those uh, get those earth easy kills because a lot because the range on uh, disruptors glimpse as you guys can see is pretty darn far. That's essentially his vision range right there. That is eighteen hundred in all directions cast range. That's quite ridiculous. And we get uh, when we got Spearbreaker charging. Spearbreaker charges himself a random PA. PA is going to be going down. She gets hit and Spearbreaker stuck inside the trees. Throws us ulti. He will be outside the trees now. He gets the kill anyway. Meanwhile, mid, we got Pudge getting a deny. He just committed suicide. Holy crap. Pudge, Pudge, like I said, really good at getting those suicides. And we got drums coming up on Tuscar or... Oh, no. He, he bought a Desolator recipe. And he's going for a uh, drums by the looks of it. Which I think is a really bad move. He's trying to get his moves speed up. Spirit so charging again. Once again, on top of that, Tinker Tinker goes down. And um, I, honestly, I think in, in this... in this uh, Throughout all these engagements, I think uh, Tuscar... Not Tuscar. Spirit Break is charging the wrong person. He's charging somebody who's either already dead... Or he's ulting somebody who's already dead, so Radiant's it's not really as useful. Meanwhile, Clink's up top, just casually Radiant's killing that tower. tower. Antimage throws out a smoke to see. He wants to go for a kill on top of the uh, dust of appearance. He wants to go for a kill on top of Clink's. Clink's in a little bit of trouble. Will Clink's pop an ability before Raz? Where is that? Was a big question. He will not. He's going to continue running. The smoke should be or dust should be running out. Radiant's middle tower has 
And Antimates does lose vision of him. Meanwhile, the middle tower does go down. We got a rotation coming in from everybody. Antimates in a lot of trouble. He's instantly on the wrong side of the road. And Clinks is now turning on him. Uh, Antimates goes in and blinks inside of trees. He's trying to blink as fast as possible again. He walks right into the disruptor silence and also to the wall. And he goes down. Speedbreaker can pick up the kill on top of that. And Ogre Maje picking himself up a blade mail. And Antimates having a lot of uh, rage going on right now. Anyway, we got Pledge, not Pledge, Ogre Magi TPing out, uh, more all chat going on, that's why I wish I could turn on chat. Anyway. Oh, items, right, I was looking at the items, as far as the items go, we see PA still has not finished her battle for you, like I said before, she was, she was dying a lot, so she, there was no way for her to actually get all that much farm. We got Tar Charge coming up from Speed Break on top of Tinker, he, he is invisible right now, Tinker shouldn't know that's going on. Uh, yeah, he should know with all the creeps getting bashed, and he decides to back away very smart so because that was under tower range, and Spearbreaker could die on, on, under those conditions. Uh, Tinker, Tinker is going to be vital to uh, make sure that these guys survive against him, but he's he can't really do much. A uh, rubric throwing out a blind dust, trying to see if he can find anybody. Yes, Tinker, Tinker uh, laser. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, it it can make Spearbreaker miss his all his auto attacks for three seconds, which could be the difference between somebody surviving and not surviving. Yeah, you know, Roshan's getting done. Everybody punch him in the face, he will be dying very shortly. Boom. And Spearbreaker picks himself up in ages. He has MKB as well. MKB, really nice for damage. I, st I don't know, I don't know. Do I prefer Chrysalis over MKB? I think I would prefer Chrysalis over MKB. Um, according to one of my friends, after you do all the numbers, after you do all the numbers for it, um, the damage for Chrysalis versus the damage for MKB, it's about the same. So, I don't know. It rounds out to about the same. If you consider how many times you crit versus how many times the MKB um, or how much damage the MKB gives you, so I, I guess the biggest difference would be the fact that the the, the Desolator or Daedalus. Did I say Crystal? I meant to say Daedalus. Um, I guess the difference between the between the MKB and the Daedalus is that the Daedalus does scale, uh, relatively speaking, because MKB only gives you flat damage. Daedalus does give you some percentage of crit, so some percentage of your damage. I actually got Spearbreaker charging once again. He's going for kill. He's going all in on top of somebody down bottom. Not sure who. Yeah, he's going on top of Antimage. Antimage is going to be going down. Easy kills, easy. Spearbreaker ulti to fly on top of Punch. There we go. That's what I was talking about before. That's what he missed before. And there's a laser gun to get on my Tinker. Spearbreaker gives zero explosive words right now because he has us up at ages of ages of the immortal. He's going to be coming up full mana, full HP, ready to charge once again. Actually, two more seconds. So he needs two more seconds. But if if that was at well time, that that'd be like next level Dota, guys. Rubik did still charge, which could be useful for another engagement. But he needs to be really, really careful. And um, yes, I don't, I don't know how many times Antimates has said GG. And there we go. Ogre Magic, does he have Agnums? No, he doesn't. He's got lucky, uh, lucky cast. And we got everybody going down. All, only person still alive is the Rubik, and he's actually still trying to run away. Clinks, well in the way at this bottom tower, saying, "Yes, I'm finally getting damage. Trying to do what he can." Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Radiance middle tower. And middle tower does go down. And more rage. More rage. Has fallen. Radiance middle barracks are under attack. Clinks just casually, you know, killing stuff. Says, "Yes, my team's carrying me." He always has himself an MKB up. That would be pretty nice right now. Rubik does have doesn't have charge. He actually lost it. Um, either he died. Yeah, he di no, he didn't die. He just ran out. He stole something. He stole himself bloodlust. Probably not. He wanted it. Antimage get a kill on top of that. It's a kill. It's a give on top of Antimage. Pudge saying still, but I, I I don't think Pudge would have been able to kill that. Um, the support from everybody else would have came in fast enough to kill him or stop stop him from killing. So Antimage is going for that kill as fast as possible. Definitely, definitely necessary. Four staff is up on top of Disruptor, and Disruptor looks huge because he is bloodlusted right now. And um, Antimage hasn't really transitioned to items yet. Um, I think it's because he's died probably three times in a row, four times in a row. And let's see, let's see what else. Nothing else interesting to talk about really. Um, MKB on top of Speed Breaker. I already talked about that. MKB versus Daedalus. But I guess I guess he can still go for Daedalus. Um, I think it costs about the same amount of gold. I heard Speed Breaker charging. Speed Breaker charged mid on top of PA. PA did go down. I'm not too sure what Antimage is talking about. Keep saying hard low. But, um, trying my hardest not to read all that. And we got uh, something, what was that? Desolator recipe? It's Desolator recipe for Tuscar. He hasn't finished his uh, Desolator yet. But he's slowly but surely, slowly but surely trying to get to it. Uh, we got Spearbreaker. Doesn't have a heart yet, but he might get one soon. Actually, he doesn't really need one. With the items that he has, he can just kill everybody because his position has been that good. Oh, wow. Talk about hooks. Talk about lucky. 
crafty, oh uh, sorry, lucky hooks. Rubik stole the stun, or uh, Rubik stole the uh, ulti from Tuscar. Throws out his auto attack, gets a kill, or uh, gets a nice little punch on top of the Ogre Magi. And now we got Disrupt again, caught inside of his own, uh, sorry, caught inside of his own storm. He will be going out. HBA is getting charged by Speedbreaker. Speedbreaker trying to get the kill on top of him. Speedbreaker does get the kill, but he will be losing his life afterwards. He can actually buy back if he really wants to, but I don't think that'll be advised. He does buy back, he wants to get back into this fight. He wants to kill everybody, any, any and everybody on that side of the map. Will he charge is a big question. No, he will not, because he charges on cooldown. TP's in with Booster Travel, throws out Shadow Blade. That's what appearance getting used by Tinker, so nobody will be, oh, sorry, so he won't be able to sneak up on anybody. And now the Shadow Blade will begin, oh, sorry, Shadow Strike will be getting thrown out by Tuscar. We got Tuscar throwing out his uh, snowball. It almost hit the PA. PA does get caught inside of her own. Oh, sorry. Getting caught inside the ice wall. Sun gun thrown out by Spirit Break on top of Ruby. Ruby does go down. We got a lot of damage getting done. Spirit Break does go down again. That is huge for these guys. This, this might be the time for these guys to push. Spirit Breaker did buy back and Spirit Breaker did go down. So Tinker can start pushing on the lanes. It'll be a little bit too late, but I mean, it might give him some hope of actually doing something. Rubik sells on the Rubik sells the stun for Ogre Magic. He needs to go ahead and throw it on top of Tuscar, but he's not going to throw it instead. He's going to run away for his life. And we got Tinker and Pudge. Pudge trying to troll. Pudge is like, hey, get back in this fountain. I'm not sure who four staffed uh, that Ruben. Or whoever that was. I think, yeah, no, never mind. Tinker four staffed himself. Okay. Anyway, Tornado Stick is up on Tinker. So that's going to be nice for him to have. But I still think I still think he needs to be pushing. Like Tinker hasn't hasn't been able to do hold hold it down for his team. Um, we're starting to get to the point where Antimate should become a, uh, should be start should start becoming effective. And we got Pudge TPing to his ancient. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is the point where Tinker should start becoming effective. Um, in this specific case, if you're playing a Tinker versus Spear Breaker like this, um, you don't want to be getting caught out. So it might be advised to build yourself a Lincoln Sphere because uh, if Spear Breaker does charge you, um, Lincoln Sphere will instantly block that uh, charge, so he can't charge you. Um, also, another thing on top of that, um, he could build himself a Ghost Scepter, which will stop him from getting Perm Bash. So Spear Breaker could charge an Ulti, but he won't be able to uh, throw throw his auto attacks to bash Tinker to stop him from TPing. So. There's a number of things Tinker can do to get rid of a Spear Breaker or just negate the fact that there's a Spear Breaker on the map while he's trying to push around the map, but he hasn't really been able to get too much room to think. So I, I, I can definitely see why he hasn't been doing much of it. Especially on TP back to base. Spear Breaker charging already. Spear Breaker charging that Tinker. Tinkering a little bit. No, never mind. He can't charge. Oh, he's charging. He's charging this person. Charging Rubik. Rubik going to be going down. Rubik might be dying. He will be going down. Yes, Tornado Stick actually really useful versus the Spirit Breaker too, because uh, you can throw out your Tornado on top of him to stop him from bashing whoever he's bashing, but it only lasts for 2.5 seconds. And actually, Tinker's taking a lot of damage. Oh, Blade Mail. Oh, jeez. Blade Mail hurts. Look how much damage Tinker took from his own March Machines. How ironic. And we got Pudge on to earn the shadows on top of Tinker, just trying to make sure Tinker stays nice and healthy so he can hurry up and get his HP back. Pudge trying to land a hook on top of Anti Mage once again, missing completely. And now we got Spirit Breaker hanging on down bottom, trying to get this kill on top of everything. Finally starting to build himself a Blade Mel. Oh, not Blade Mel. Jeez, sorry. Reading chat too much. Try, trying to build himself a, des a data list. And actually, Pudge, Pudge could go for his kill. If he does decide to go for his kill, he needs his backup from his allies, which his backup is here. But we got Clinks around the corner with his Orca Malevolence. He's actually going to go ahead and kill a building. And one of the biggest issues with anti Mage right now is that he doesn't have enough HP to survive all this, uh, all this damage coming out. Telekinesis stone from Clink, or from Rubik on top of Clinks. He stole himself Shadow Walk. Huge for him to have. That actually be very useful. Blade Mail on top of Tinker on top of Tinker's March Machines. Ogre Magic taking a lot of damage, but Tinker, Tinker not taking necessarily taking as much damage. Ogre Magic wanted him to take. And Spirit Breaker charge. Spirit Breaker charge on top of somebody. Plus gets killed on top of Ogre Magic. Spirit Breaker charge on top of Anti Mage. Anti Mage gets Telekinesis. Beautiful Telekinesis coming from Rubik. Saves Ally's life. And uh, we got the ulti coming off of Spirit Breaker. It does get the kill on top of. I don't know. The, no, I killed nobody. Did he, did he just... Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, I got the kill on top of PA. It does get the kill on top of PA. But, um, beautiful telekinesis coming out from Rubik, saving his, uh, saving his carry's life. Best hook of my life coming out from Pudge. And we got, finally, another hook coming out from Pudge. Will he be able to get the ultimate on top of Spearbreaker? Breaker? Spearbreaker gets dusted up. And we also got a, a wild Tuscar around the corner. Tuscar might be going out. No, Tuscar gets a kill on top of, uh, Plink. But Tuscar's in a lot of trouble. Tuscar will be going out, finally. 803 gold for killing one person, guys. That is the state of the game right now. That is the state of the game. Rubik, Rubik, shadow walking, or ghost walking, right? Skeleton walking. Is it skeleton walk? I think skeleton walk. 
Yeah. Rubik skeleton walking right next to Clink's. Clink's skeleton walking right next to Clink. Rubik. And looks like Clink's is just trying to give vision to his spear breaker. Oh, nope, nope. There we go. Pudge. Pudge, like, screw that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this kill. And gets a hook. Gets a kill on top of that Clink's easiest kill of his life. And actually, Pudge is in a little bit of trouble. Spear is gonna charge all the way in. I think Rubik needs to go ahead and get out of the line. Um, yes, he does finally get out of the line. Spear breaker does decide against it. Very smart so. And Daedalus, Daedalus is almost up on top of Spirit Breaker. He's gonna go ahead and kill Ancients and get the gold for that. Meanwhile, Ancient Mage trying to build himself a, a Mage style, which would be huge for him, but he doesn't have all that much HP. Um, the stats coming up from the stats coming up from the Ultimate Orb right now, really all it gives him is just one more auto attack from Spirit Breaker. Because Spirit Breaker is hitting or is critting for probably about 400 by now. Or maybe 500 now. But Spirit Breaker is critting for quite a bit. And uh, having 10 extra stats and HP, like 10 extra strength stats. What that translates to is that translates to, excuse me, um, that translates into um, 14 times, no, 19, I think it's 19, 19 times 10, so 190 HP uh, for anti mage extra because he has the ultimate orb, because he has the 10 extra stats, which I mean, like I said, Spirit Breaker is critting for like 400, so that's, that's going to be half an auto attack from Spirit Breaker. And that's, that's not including the bash, I think bash gives him more damage as well. See, it gives him bonus move speed, and oh yeah, there we go. Move speed is damage forty percent, so technically more damage. His move speed right now is five hundred twenty-two because he has uh, bloodlust plus he has empowering case. Holy crap, that's pretty fast. So see, forty percent of five hundred twenty-two. Hmm, what is that? That is that's a lot of extra damage. That's what that is. That's why my shotgun's going out so fast. Actually, let me go ahead and bring out the calculator. Let's bring out the calculator so we can do some de math. See, 522 times 0.4 equals 208 extra damage. Just because he moves at max move speed. That is a lot of free damage, guys. And that's, that's not included crit. <clears throat> that's just bonus damage. So we'll see. We'll see when the damage comes out. We got Spirit Breaker charging himself a PA. Very, very nice because this person over here in the corner is already dead. Spirit Breaker getting the kill on top of PA. Critting for 787. <coughs> that is quite a 792. I'm, uh, like, guys, just the amount of damage coming from Spirit Breaker is actually pretty nasty right now. Um, and don't forget, I, I think those crits are counting in the fact that he's, uh, he's getting his bashes. <laughs> There's one Rax going out, the next Rax will be going out soon. Tuscar, Tuscar Desolator's up, so that means all these builds will be falling that much faster. Negative 7 armor, I'm sorry, uh, actually negative 9 armor, if I'm not mistaken. Tuscar throwing a snowball, he will be getting, everybody catch a snowball on top of Anthony. Anthony does get hit with a stun, but he will not be going out. Um, there we go, I was about to say, Disruptor trying to give himself a glimpse, but he actually goes down to the tanker because of it. And Rubik, Rubik, Shadow Walks, or Skeleton Walks around the corner, trying to scout out around the corner, trying to scout out, trying to let everybody know what's going on. He gets himself a stun, no, he gets himself fire instead, not what he wanted. No Agnes Scepter on top of, so on top of Spirit Breaker, beautiful tornado caught up, Tinker saves out of his life for just that much more. And nobody's going down just yet, the only person going down is Pudge, and he went down a little bit earlier, actually Tinker might be going down here soon. Uh, Mantra Machine's actually hurting him a lot, we got Shadow, oh, we got uh, Blade Mel, Blade Mel. Damage something Tinker, but the Fountain's healing him a little bit too fast. Rubik's still himself Ice Wall, getting charged. Spirit Breaker charging on top of a Tinker, and that was a tiny Spirit Breaker. I'm just sure was up with that. Spirit Breaker going to be going down. Aegis gets popped. He needs to bounce off a BKB. He really needs a BKB in these fights. He's actually going to run away. Oh, sorry, Ghost Scepters. And there's a situation around the corner. These guys will be going for the kill. Will they be able to kill him fast enough? No! The Ancient does go down. That is the end of the game. GG well played getting thrown out. GG well played indeed. Spear Breaker literally broke the spirits of everybody on that on the enemy side. And that was that was That was a pretty telltale game. I was that much. Pretty, pretty much the reason why the radio lost in that instance was mainly because Tinker couldn't really get the push that he needed to delay the game for long enough for Antimage and PA to get their farm. Um Antimage did get his main style up at the end, but it wasn't it wasn't it was it was way too little, way too late. So anyway. Let me go ahead and pause. This game was sent to me by the Spirit Breaker, so thank you, 50 Centaur, for sending me this game. This was a very interesting game. Sorry it took me so long to get to it. You sent me this game like a month ago, and I'm finally casting it now. I don't know, guys. Like, like I, I just get lazy sometimes. But I do have an excuse. I had a lot of things going on as of last week. So that's my excuse. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed the cast. My name is Cool Blue, like I said before, and I'll see you guys whenever.